Hi, this is Roisin from Sweet Eve Signs and today I'm bringing you part one of how to design this light up bubble shaker marvel cake topper. Wow, that's a mouthful. Let's get started. So first, let's start with our shaker. So to make our shaker, we're going to grab a circle from the left hand shape panel and we're going to make it bigger so it's easier to work with. Then we're going to duplicate it and we're going to make the second circle smaller. When you're doing this, just imagine how big you want your shaker to be and resize accordingly. Then centre and slice. Then go ahead and delete the circles from inside as they will no longer be required. And you'll be left with this cut out shape. Then we're going to use our inset tool and we're going to make a slight inset. Then grab these two shapes and slice. Then go ahead and delete everything, but leave these hollow rings. This is what you're going to use to make the frame of your shaker. I'm going to change the colour because it just makes it easier for me to visualise the design. Then you're going to apply an offset, you can try 0.1 and you're going to do this twice and change the colour accordingly to fit with your theme. This is going to be the frame for your shaker. Then group. Now it's important to resize your shaker and use this as the kind of reference for how big you want your cake topper to be. So in this instance, I made mine six inches, but obviously it depends on the side of the cake that you're gonna be working with. Then go ahead and duplicate. Then we're going to weld this shape together. And then we're going to go to the contour and we're going to close out the gap in the middle so that we still have the main circle, but the part in the middle is closed. And I'm changing mine to grey because this is going to be my acetate layer. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to change it to a different colour and this is going to be the backing of my shaker. Then I'm just going to arrange all of these and group them. And that's our shaker done. It's pretty simple when you know how. So next let's move on to doing our Spider-Man. So let's hide this so we have more space to work with. And then I'm going to add in this Spider-Man um, image that I bought off of Etsy. I will put the link in the description. I'm going to apply an offset of 0.08 because this is really thin and I think it's more designed to be used on vinyl or HTV. And then I'm going to go ahead and delete the original. This should just make it much easier to cut on your machine. Then go ahead and resize to make this easier to work with. And then we're going to duplicate. Then we're going to go to our contour and we're going to hide all of our contours and we're going to make this into a white colour. We're going to then go ahead and duplicate again and then we're going to hide all of our contours but we're going to leave the eyes out so that the eyes are open. Then we're going to change this to red and you'll see when you stack it up that it will seem like the eyes are poking through. Then we'll put the red on top and we'll just arrange and group. Now you're going to resize because you're going to unhide your shaker and then you're just going to move this around and reposition it and resize it until you're happy with it. Don't worry too much at this time because you still have time to move things around. Now we're going to get our web which is actually a design space image, I'll put the information in the description and when we bring it onto the canvas we're going to change it into white and then we're going to resize and we're just going to position where we're comfortable with. So. Um, we're just going to flip it around and we're going to make sure we send it to the back and we're just going to continue to adjust until we're happy with the position. You want to make sure that none of the web is kind of showing through in that in our open circle part. There's no right or wrong way of doing this, just move it until you're happy with where it's positioned. Now apply an offset, try 0.08 and then we're going to change the colour to grey to match our acetate layer. Now group and hide so that we can move on to the next part of our shaker. So now we're going to move on to the Black Panther. Uh, I will put the link in the description for this SVG that I bought on Etsy. I think you could probably get one a lot cheaper, but I already had this, um, so I didn't want to buy a different one. So what you're going to need to do is just have the face and the spikes. Then hide the spikes and just make the face bigger so it's easier to work with and then go ahead and duplicate. And we're going to use our contour tool and we're going to hide all contours. But you can see when you do that that there are still some gaps. So we're going to use a shape from the left hand shapes panel and we're going to weld any kind of shape into it just to clean it up a bit. 
and then we're going to go into the contour and make sure there aren't any little gaps that we've missed out and we're going to hide all contours and then we're going to change the color and this is going to be the backing for our black panther um, and then we're going to duplicate the backing as well so that we have two layers then we're going to align center and group now we're going to unhide our shaker and just like before we're just going to adjust the size of our head and kind of position it roughly where we want it to be i forgot to mention that you also need to duplicate the backing of the spider-man so just go ahead and do that now and then just continue to resize and reposition until you're happy with where both of your spider-man and your black panthers are sitting now you need to unhide your spikes and we're just going to make them bigger and we're going to send it to the back and just kind of position it where we want it to be and um, you can see that there was a slight gap here and i wasn't happy with that so i went ahead and duplicated it and then i made the second set of spikes just slightly smaller just so that there isn't such a gap behind the head and the, the next set of spikes and then when i was kind of happy with the where they were positioned um, i just grouped them together um, and then i sent them to the back again just to check that i was happy with where they were positioned and once I was happy with the size and the positioning, I went ahead and applied a 0.08 offset and again changed the color um, to match the acetate layer. Then grouped and hide. Now we're going to move on to our Thor, which um, again is a SVG I purchased from um, Etsy, so I'll put the link in the description. So go ahead and hide your lightning and then we're going to work with the hammer. So we're going to resize to make it easier to work with and ungroup. I don't know why this thing was down here so I just moved it into the right position and then I'm going to work on each section so I'm going to weld together the top part of the hammer change the color weld together the um, handle um, and then I'm going to group everything together and then I'm just going to apply a really thin offset uh, just because I just want it to just outline um, and allow me to have something to attach the vinyl to and I'm just going to change the color um, and then I'm going to apply another offset which was 0.08 um, which will give us a bit more of a dimension and then group. Now let's unhide our lightning and we're going to change the colour and we're just going to make it slightly smaller so it's easier to work with. When I actually positioned it I realised it was super thin so I just made it bigger again and applied a really small offset of 0 0.06, um, deleted the original and then changed the colour. Again just makes it easier to cut even though this is on vinyl there's no harm in making life a little bit easier for yourself. So then just resize and position. I had one kind of coming out of the right and of the left and I duplicated. Um, when I duplicated the third time, I wanted the one at the top to be slightly shorter. So I just used my shapes panel on the left hand side to grab a shape and then use that to slice it out to make it slightly shorter and then just deleted everything that I didn't need. Then just go ahead and position that last lightning bolt just coming out of the top. Um, you might need to resize it until you're happy with where it's positioned. Make sure that you then weld all three of your lightning bolts together into one shape and hide your hammer. Now you're going to apply an offset, try 0.08. And then just grab a circle or a similar shape from the left hand shapes panel um, and move your main lightning to the side and then we're going to need to just put something in the middle here because basically we want all of our acetate to connect so that's why we're doing this here so then weld this and then change it to grey to match your acetate layer then just arrange your lightning on the front um, and group it all together then we need to unhide our hammer um, and make sure that we're sending the lightning to the back um, and this is where we're now going to create the hole for our light to poke through so grab a circle from the left hand shapes panel i made mine 0 0.2 it was a bit small so maybe try 0 0.3 and then change the color so that it's easy to find what we're going to do is position it where we want the light to be poking through and we're going to slice the first layer of the hammer then we're going to delete the sliced out circle parts and then we're going to weld the original circle back together. This circle will be used as our reference so that when we go to the next layer, the circle will be in exactly the same place. So grab your circle and do the same for the next two layers. Then also slice the circle into your acetate layer. And then you're just gonna to need to rearrange and put these into the right place and then group it all together.
Use the circle as a guide as to where you need to position and then group it all together. Then we're going to unhide our main shaker and we're going to resize this hammer so that we can kind of get it in the right place and the right position. Now, one important thing to say is that you need to make sure that where the circle is, that there is enough space at the back for you to be able to have your light um, and that you'll be able to get to light easily. So a way of checking this is just sending to the back and making sure that that circle and kind of one inch or so around it is not covered. So now let's work on our text. Make sure that you go to system because this is a text that you're going to have needed to download from the font. I will put the information in the description box. And make sure that when you're using this font that you're using the caps. And when you use caps, you'll find that you'll get different um, text options coming up. So I'm just going to type out my name, which in this instance is Tristan, and I'm going to group and hide the shaker so that I can work on the text. Um, and then I'm going to make it slightly bigger and I'm going to ungroup it. You see here the A and the N, I think that they're way too far apart. So I'm just going to move them closer together, align at the top to make sure that they're all in the right position. And then I'm going to group. Then I'm going to make this really, really big and I'm going to apply an offset. Um, I actually use 0.15, but when I cut it, it was really small. So maybe try 0.18 um, and I did that four times. Um, and then I'm just going to position my text and see kind of where I want it to be and I'm going to change the colours using the right hand panel. Now let's group everything together. And uh, what we're going to do now is that we're going to do our number. Now for this particular text, for some reason the 5 was really weird, so I actually downloaded a different font um, to be able to get the number 5, but you might find that with the original font the number is absolutely fine. So then I went ahead and I duplicated this number, and then I used a square from the left hand shapes panel to slice half of the number, so it will just give me like this two toned effect. So I'm going to slice a square and then I'm going to delete everything but keep one part and then change the colours um, and that's going to give me that kind of two-tone effect. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply an offset. Um, I think in this instance I tried uh, 0 0.08 but you know with offset it really does depend. And then I applied the offset four times and just changed the colours um, and I made sure to duplicate the back of the number as well. So then go ahead and group this, um, make sure that you align and centre. Um, and group this together and then just resize it and then just think about where you want it to be positioned. Uh, remember that your kind of lightning is going to be slightly floating so if it covers the number that's completely okay. Um, now that I've got all of my elements together I'm going to make sure that I go ahead and move things around and kind of reposition but just remembering to make sure that you um, duplicate the back of your text sorry i forgot to say that and that when you reposition you make sure that your circle hole for your light is in the right place then i'm going to group everything together then i'm going to go ahead and duplicate this um, so that i can create the back layer for my shaker which will just give me a reference as to where i need to position everything to make sure it looks exactly like the design uh, so just go ahead and duplicate um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of some of the elements, hide the original so that we can work with the backing that we're trying to do. And then I'm just going to go ahead with this and I'm going to delete all the acetate elements because I don't want those welded in um, to my actual backing. One thing that I remember during the assembly is that actually you need to slice a one inch circle into this backing where the light goes in because it's going to go behind the main big part of the light. Then hide this and then unhide the um, original and then we're going to duplicate again. And now we're going to do our acetate layer which is going to go at the back of our cake topper. So hide the original and then we're going to delete everything but only leave the spider web and the spikes. And then we're gonna weld that together and we're going to um, make sure that we uh, just position everything. And I realized that I also need to make sure that you contour out that circle. So basically you're gonna have this massive acetate layer that's gonna go across the back of the shaker. And then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna delete the original um, acetate layers that you made only for the spikes and for the um, spider-man web 
because uh, that's going to be now at the backing but you'll leave the one for the for the thaw because that is going to be coming at the front when you assemble it will make a lot more sense and that's your light up wobble marvel shaker done so you'll learn how to assemble this very soon there'll be a tutorial coming for that so make sure you like comment and subscribe and when you subscribe you'll get a notification when the assembly video is up why not give me a follow on Instagram, TikTok and Pinterest where I have lots of different types of content. And while you're waiting around for the next video to drop, here are some to keep you busy. Take care and bye.